Okay, welcome back to uh, Fantasy Applied, our mechanics corner here on the uh, Standard J1 project. Uh, my name is Ken Kellett. We're going to give you a little update for November to show you where we've been. Okay, well you'll remember the last time we uh, did one of these videos, we were uh, taking the fuselage out of the jig off the table over here. That was fun. Uh, obviously things have gone very quickly since then. Remember all the uh, components to the airplane have been finished. And so it was just a matter of uh, actually putting them on the airframe. And uh, we do that at this point to make sure that everything's going to fit so that we can check uh, to see if there's any errors in the fuselage. Obviously, just the fact that the components bolt on in the right position and sit where they're supposed to sit, that's important, obviously, at this point. We started with the tail group. Uh, we went on and put the uh, turtle deck on. Uh, the instrument panel went in. Uh, the sheet metal went on at that point. Side sheet metal was fitted and drilled. Then we went ahead and put the uh, center section uh, on and got it rigged and made up all the cables for that. Lower wings were installed and that was important so that we could check uh, dimensionally again from the wing tips to the tail post to make sure that the airplane is going together straight. It doesn't have any issues in that department. And once that was done, it was time to gather up the crew and put the top wing on it. So we did that just earlier in the week here. And now we're in the process of rigging the airplane. Uh, the dihedral is three degrees into the wing and making all the uh, cables. So that's kind of our process right now. We're just making the cables one by one uh, and, uh, and kind of rigging the airplane, maybe not out of total rig, but certainly close enough so that when we get time to do the final rigging, that everything's going to be pretty close. So, uh, so that's going along as well. We also are still working with the, the fuel tank. The uh, chemicals that we were using to try to deal with the rust inside the tank weren't really doing the job that needed to be done, so we came up with a tumbling apparatus to, uh, to tumble the tank, and that seems to be working well, so we're going to be able to save the tank. Okay, on our last video, uh, you remember I mentioned a number of times uh, that we've got some rust in the gas tank that we're trying to resolve. We're trying our best to save this original tank versus building a new one. And so we've, uh, we've had to get creative here. So we're going to step inside and see what we're doing. Uh, Dave created this uh, monster and uh, with a little trip to Lowe's and a cement mixer we're tumbling the tank. So follow me. Okay, this is what Dave came up with. Uh, we're, uh, we tried chemical stripping. Uh, that worked sort of. We tried walnut shell. We tried uh, some resin pellets, and we ultimately just ended up using gravel. And so that's what we've got going in the tank. It's cleaning it up really well inside, and I think we're not going to have any problems saving the tank. So uh, the rust was really bad inside, and uh, it just seems to be working. This is the gravel we're using. Yeah. 
the tumbling apparatus seems to be working well, so we're going to be able to save the tank. Making a new tank was going to be very expensive, and it's not original. So it would, it's, it's to our benefit and to the benefit of the airplane itself that, that it has the, uh, the original tank uh, in the airplane. So, uh, so maybe we'll do some close-ups over here and show you some of the things. One of the things, obviously, that's important for us at this point, and one of the reasons why it has to be assembled, and I should back up just a little bit because I know that I promised that we were going to move this airplane over to the restoration shop. Well, that didn't work out quite as planned because our space got occupied by some other stuff. So uh, I decided just to use the wood shop here was able to move a few things around and was still able to still stick the wings on it. So yeah, we have to crawl around and, and stuff, but, uh, but that does work. But in the meantime, the important thing is at this point is all the controls have to be hooked up and the cables run so that then I can dimension and find out where those cables exit the fabric on the fuselage uh, primarily. And uh, that can't be accomplished unless all those components are on the airplane and hooked up. So, uh, so we're in that process right now. Airplanes have to go together multiple times. It will be all tore apart again soon. And then we'll be covering the, the fuselage with the, the fabric on the sides, putting the patches where the cables exit, finish up, finish, finishing up the paintwork on it, and at that point, we really are kind of coming down the road uh, to getting it done. We still don't have our engine down here yet. We still don't have a, a radiator, but we have kind of trial fit some of the uh, sheet metal that surrounds the engine. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do that, but, uh, but I went ahead and was able to accomplish some of that. The bottom panel still probably needs to be done when the radiator gets here, but, uh, but we are obviously making making progress in that department. So, uh, so let's take a closer look and you can see some of the details of the things that we've been doing. Okay, I'm gonna show you some details uh, to kind of make sure that you understand kind of what we're looking at here. You know, obviously we have the control stick in there and there's gonna be a cable that runs from the control stick that goes out and it's gonna go out to a pulley out there on the leading edge of the wing. Now we don't have the ailerons on just yet, or the aileron on this wing, actually for a reason, because you know it's hard enough putting that wing up as it was, because it's pretty heavy and it's pretty far up there. So we don't need to actually have the uh, cord here go to the aileron horn, but going through the uh, pulley up there, it, it defines exactly where that where that cable's going to go. So as it comes down, it's going to come through the fabric right in this area right here. So what I have to do now is I'll dimension where that actually is. And when we finish the airplane, we'll have a, a leather patch there that the cable will rub through so it doesn't tear the fabric up. Because that cable is going to bounce around a little bit. And you can see if it started doing that, it's going to start tearing the fabric up. So we want to kind of minimize the damage that that cable would do flopping around like that. So, so that's what I mean by that. We'll have the same thing back here when the uh, uh, elevator cables exit, they exit kind of right in here. Uh, and then of course the rudder uh, cable, it exits right up here. And um, so we'll be able to dimension where those exit points are so that we, we can then go ahead and put a patch there just to kind of minimize the, the damage that the, the cable actually does. One of the other things, obviously we put the wings on. It's important for us, you know, once we start rigging the airplane so that we get the wings straight so that they're not crooked and whatnot. We have these rigging boards that you see, this red one here and a white one out there. These, these are positioned on the wing and then we can actually set a level on there, a digital level, and read those. Or we can just stand at the end of the wing and use our eyeballs and eyeball down those to make sure that when they're in line, they're in line, and then we know that uh, the wing is sitting and is not twisted, that the wing is sitting flat like it's supposed to. 
Once we get the lower wing set, we go ahead and put the top wing on, put the struts in place. And of course, now we're setting the dihedral, which is the wings tapering up. And in this particular case, it's three degrees. The incidence, which is the other direction of the wings, that's kind of controlled by the fuselage itself. So if we screwed that up, well, guess what? It's screwed up. You know, it is what it is. Uh, but hopefully, we're in the right ballpark for that. But uh, dihedral, we have to set that. And that is set again with the cables. And that's why it's important that the center section up here be perfectly rigged and supported correctly because now it's holding all the weight of these wings over here. So, um, so that's kind of critical. And that's about it for right now as far as, uh, as, far as the rigging goes. We're still making cables today. Uh, there's different size cables. There's flying wires that take the flying loads. And then there's cables that's taking the landing loads. And so the flying cables, you know, when the airplane is being lifted up, obviously there's quite a bit of force lifting it up. Those cables are doubled so that, uh, so that that's uh, taken care of so we don't have a structural failure. And then, of course, the cables the other way is when you land. So when you hit the ground, the wings don't break off. Where you see these are doubled here, uh, this wire, there'll be another wire uh, going up parallel to that. Uh, these are flying wires, and the wire that then comes from up above and comes down, that's a landing wire. So that's what the story on the cables is. Some of the sizes are, in most cases in this, is 5 seconds, and in some it's eighth inch. And all the control cables as well are eighth inch uh, galvanized steel uh, cables. Okay, that uh, probably wraps most of that up. As I said, we're uh, going to have to go back and, and fit the gas tank in. We never really got to do that uh, because of cleaning the tank, but that will be fitted in as soon as we take it all apart and uh, move the airplane into the restoration shop. Okay, well that's going to kind of wrap us up here for November. I certainly want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and uh, all that. We're coming up on Christmas. We'll have another uh, uh, update by the end of the year uh, for everybody so you can see where we're going. Obviously at this point, you know, we finish up the cables here. Uh, the airplane's going to all come apart again. Uh, obviously even to get the fuel tank put in, we need to sort that out. At a certain point we can actually start plumbing the fuel tank. So once we get it cleaned and uh, final painted again and, and back in the airplane, uh, we'll have to sort out that. We've even decided the, the fuel tank that's in the top center section, it's going to have to be tumbled as well. So, uh, so we'll be uh, dealing with that. I mean, let's say these steel tanks are kind of a, an issue for us. On a, on a personal note, I'd like to add um, something that I... This pandemic has been tough on everybody. Uh, it's been really tough on museums all over the country for them to stay open. And I'd just like to say that uh, it's imp museums are important, and it doesn't matter whether it's an airplane museum or whatever, whatever museum that you may have in your town. What's important is that you support it. And by that, I mean go visit it. When friends come to see you, take them to your local museum and show them what you got. Go in the gift shop, buy a t-shirt. These museums need all the help they can get during this tough time, and without it, guess what? They go away. If you don't support them, we're going to lose them. So keep that in mind, and uh, we'll talk to you next month. Okay, 